Seth Brundle is a scientist working on teleportation. He introduces the project to a journalist, Veronica, and the two quickly fall in love. After an argument over her ex-boyfriend and boss, the manipulative Stathis, who is still in love with her, Brundle gets drunk and decides to test the machine on himself, apparently teleporting okay. However, there was a housefly in the telepod with him, and he begins to go through a weird mutation as a consequence. Originally a short story, The Fly was adapted into an enjoyable Vincent Price horror flick in 1958. This remake made a number of changes to the original and far more faithful version, bringing it more into line with Cronenberg's usual set of preoccupations. In fact, of all of Cronenberg's disease films, The Fly seems to best crystallise and focus his ideas. The most significant difference to the original story is the nature of fusion of man and fly. Instead of swapping heads and swapping arms, here they are fused at a genetic level, causing Seth Brundle to go through an incremental metamorphosis from man into giant bug. And it is here that Cronenberg is in his element, exploring the fear and fascination of infection and transformation, mutation of mind and body, an exploration of our attitudes towards our bodies and ourselves, disease, decay and deformed flesh. This change from the original also allows Brundle to remain articulate about his condition, right up until the final stage. Cronenberg isn't just interested in what it is that's happening to him, but what it feels like to experience such a transformation. And there is his normal weird fascination with the question, what does the disease want? It wants to turn me into something else. That's not too terrible, is it? Most people would give anything to be turned into something else. Turned into what? What do you think, a fly? Am I becoming a 185-pound fly? No, I'm becoming something that never existed before. I'm becoming... In the original story and film, the scientist was immediately afflicted, the horror of his state unambiguous, whereas here we see first the benefits. We see Brundle enthused, the eager scientist wanting to embrace the condition, discover what new potential this new form has. Cronenberg takes the time to explore the potential benefits of his new state, the mental, physical, not to mention sexual potency. This also serves to build tension. We know that whatever high or benefit Seth may be experiencing, there will be a price to pay, and we're just waiting for the horror to manifest. And Brundle's initial denial that the change he has gone through is anything but positive is almost like a junkie refusing to acknowledge their problem, and adds depth and complexity to the human drama. But as his condition progresses, his physical deterioration continues. His body rapidly degenerates from its prime to crippling infirmity and hideous mutation. The transformation is not only one of physical decay, but mental. As Brundle's human form deteriorates, so too does his humanity. The disease not only utterly destroys his body, but reduces his capacity to empathise and relate to others, as he struggles to control the cooler insectile impulses. Until finally, in the last stage of his change, he shucks off the human shell completely, shedding the outer layers of flesh and the remnants of his personality, revealing the utterly inhuman monster beneath. Cronenberg tends to focus on the frequently gruesome biological details, for example, Brundle eating like a fly or his ear falling off, yet takes only a cursory interest in, say, the mechanics or grander implications of teleportation. Though that's appropriate enough, given that this isn't a science fiction tale of technology, it merely uses the sci-fi conceit in order to tell a horror story. I'd be remiss not to mention the graphic special effects, for which this film is justly notorious. The violence, though never gratuitous, is still unapologetically excessive, and it is pleasing to see that Cronenberg refused to sell out a hardcore horror audience by pandering to the mainstream. But the point could also be made that by making the film so graphic, he potentially excludes those who might otherwise be attracted to the film's deeper undercurrents and central tragic love story. Though it is hard to imagine this film without its gruesome excess, given that the special effects are as integral to the themes and storytelling as any other element of the film. It's also interesting to note how there were a series of shock scenes sporadically weaved into the narrative throughout the first half of the movie, almost to whet the appetite, as though the filmmakers didn't want the viewers to get too bored while the story elements are being set up. It reminds me a little of a modern action movie, where the producer randomly sticks a finger into a script every 20 pages or so and says it needs a chase sequence here. All that said, this film isn't just a showcase for Oscar-winning splattergore, it's also a carefully constructed emotional drama, a love triangle and tragedy. In fact, the film itself is a hybrid of horror and melodrama, the two elements both equally well developed, so much so that either one could be lifted away, still leaving a coherent narrative behind. There was also a theatrical element to the three-hander, the rest of the incidental cast being, well, incidental, and the characters are suitable archetypes. The nerdy scientist, the foxy love interest, 
and the slimy ex-boyfriend slash boss, but Cronenberg plays with his cliches knowingly, indicative of his non-judgmental approach to characterisation and his effortless ability to simultaneously see differing viewpoints. Heroes and villains are not clear-cut. Through the course of the movie, Stathis changes from a crude and crass emotional manipulator into the hero, albeit a woefully inadequate and underprepared one, but he does genuinely care about Veronica, and the tables are turned on us as he becomes the hero, and Brundle, the savage monster, wishing to horribly destroy his love rival, and inflict his madness and depraved experiments upon the helpless heroine. Unlike the tradition of similar weird tales about man treading on God's toes and being suitably punished for his hubris, a la Frankenstein, its many derivatives and countless atomic monster movies, Cronenberg is never judgmental, and portrays Brundle's work as a natural part of mankind's exploration of science and nature. What happens stems from a random whim of chance rather than destiny's judicial hand. In fact, what actually prompts Seth to recklessly test the telepods on himself is a drunken grievance following his jealous arguments with Veronica. It is romantic naivety more than any zealous scientific inquiry that brings about his eventual fate. The Fly, a tale of a man who turns into a giant bug, told with gloopy special effects and gruesome relish, but ultimately the film is a tragedy, a very human tale of a man who falls in love, contracts a debilitating wasting disease and dies. Cronenberg remarked dryly of the film, if it were made as a straight drama and didn't have the trappings of genre, it would be too horribly tragic and depressing for most studios to even consider.